All right, let's dive in. We're going all the way back to 1985. Oh, 1985. Yeah, the year of uh, big hair, shoulder pads. Let's sing Elma's Fire. You got it. That coming-of-age classic that introduced the world to the Brat Pack. Such a phenomena. For sure. Yeah. This group of young actors, they really took Hollywood by storm back then. They did. Yeah. And we're going to be focusing on Rob Lowe's recent memories of that era. Oh, interesting. We've got a ton of interviews, articles, all about his time on St. Elmo's Fire and with the Brat Pack. I'm ready to dig in. Me too. Yeah. And one juicy tidbit that I just had to start with is, um, yeah. well, Rob Lowe finally confirming a brief fling with Demi Moore. Oh, wow. During filming. So all those rumors about the Brat Pack and their off-screen relationships. Yeah. Turns out there might be some truth to them. Right. It's like we all kind of knew it, but now it's like confirmed. It's interesting, though, how Lowe freezes it. What do you mean? Well, he says brief fling, and he's careful to point out they're still good friends today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he doesn't want to, like, stir up too much trouble. Right, like he's not trying to tell tales at a school or anything. Yeah, but it definitely adds another layer to their on-screen chemistry, don't you think? Absolutely. Now, this isn't the only interesting thing Lowe said about those days on set. Oh. He actually mentioned that with all those young actors working so closely together, uh -huh. he said hookups were practically inevitable. Well... Yes, it makes sense. Right. It was the 80s, a different time in Hollywood. Well, sure. Do you think things would be the same today, like on a movie set with a bunch of young stars? Hmm. That's a good question. I mean, would you be surprised if something like that happened today? It's hard to say. I mean, social norms around dating and relationships have changed so much since the 80s. That's true. What Thanks. might have been considered commonplace back then Yeah. might raise eyebrows today. It really makes you wonder how they'd handle a movie like St. Almost Fire if it were made today. Right. I mean, the themes of love and friendship. Yeah, coming of age. How would they adapt that to a modern audience? It's a great question. But getting back to Rob Lowe. Yeah. He doesn't stop at the fling with Demi Moore. Oh. He also talks about attending her wedding to Bruce Willis. Wow. He describes it as the biggest wedding he'd ever been to. Can you imagine? the guest list alone. Right. Talk about a Hollywood spectacle. Seriously. It gives you a little glimpse into their world back then. Uh-huh. These young stars, their lives were so intertwined. On and off screen. Yeah. They were just colleagues. No. They were part of this exclusive Hollywood scene. Yeah. It makes you wonder if that tight-knit group dynamic, if mm -hmm. that was part of what made the Brat Pack so appealing to audiences. Oh, for sure. That sense of camaraderie. Yeah. Like we were getting a peek into their real lives. Exactly. Okay, so speaking of their careers. Yeah. There's one exciting bit of news that came up in these interviews. Tell me. The possibility of a St. Elmo's Fire sequel. No way, really? Yes. Rob Lowe seems super enthusiastic about it. He said it's moving along, but... Mm. Well, he admitted that it's going a little slower than he'd like. Ah, I see. I bet they're taking their time. I would hope so. Yeah, to get the story right. Especially for a sequel to such a beloved film. Exactly. You don't want to mess with a classic. Right. Can't just rehash the original. No way. They need something fresh. While still honoring the spirit of the first film. Definitely. Now, get this. All the original cast members are reportedly on board. Wow, that's amazing. Can you imagine seeing them all back together? Decades later. I know. It's crazy to think about. Do you think they can recapture that same magic? I mean, that's the big question, isn't it? It is. You know, this whole sequel idea, it's part of a trend we're seeing in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Revisiting iconic films with the original cast. Interesting. Like a blend of nostalgia. Exactly. With a fresh take on the characters. I like that. It allows us to see how they've matured, how they've evolved over time. And St. Elmo's Fire, I Amen. mean, it dealt with such universal themes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Post-college life, friendship, figuring out adulthood. Things that are still so relevant today. Maybe even more so now. Right. Especially for millennials and Gen Z facing their own unique challenges. It's wild to think about how those themes might play out in a sequel. Decades later, yeah. I mean, we're talking about characters now navigating midlife. Totally different challenges from their 20s. Right, and Rob Lowe even hinted that the sequel will explore this idea that it's never too late for happiness. Oh, wow. Love that. Right. What do you make of that? Well, it suggests that the sequel won't just be a nostalgic trip down memory lane. Uh -huh. It'll delve into these deeper questions. About what? About what it means to lead a meaningful life, regardless of age. I'm already intrigued. Me too. 
Imagine seeing these characters grapple with things like career changes, evolving relationships. Right. And maybe even a sense of disillusionment or rediscovery. The storytelling potential is huge. It is. And I'm so excited to see how it all unfolds. Me too. It's going to be fascinating. It really is. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground here. We have. From Brat Pack gossip to sequel speculation. And everything in between. This is already shaping up to be a captivating exploration. It really is. Yeah. I can't wait to see where it goes from here. Me neither. <laughs> but we're just getting started. We'll be back after a quick break to delve even deeper into the potential storylines. And the cultural impact of the Brat Pack. And the enduring legacy of St. Elmo's Fire. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> you know, it, it's wild how these little stories from Rob Lowe... Yeah. Give us this peek behind the curtain of Hollywood. Right. Like a reminder that these films, these yeah. cultural moments, yeah. they're not just made in some, like, vacuum. Yeah. They're shaped by real people. Uh -huh. Real relationships. In the whole cultural landscape of the time. Exactly. It really is like a time capsule. It is. Back to the 80s when the Brat Pack was like... Everything. They weren't just actors, you know, they were a full-blown cultural phenomenon. What do you think it was about them that really captured people's imaginations? That's a good question. I think part of it was their films, for sure. Yeah. They really tapped into those anxieties, like mm -hmm. those big questions everyone has when they're first starting out as adults. Makes sense. But it was also their off-screen personas, I think. Oh, yeah. That sense of... They were all friends, uh -huh. almost like a family. That must have resonated with audiences. It totally did. It wasn't just acting. It felt real. It's like they were inviting us into their world. Yes. This glamorous, exciting world of Hollywood. But also a world with real heartbreaks and struggles. Right. They were living these larger-than-life experiences, but somehow they still seemed relatable. Like the cool kids we all wanted to hang out with. Exactly, and that feeling that they were being genuine, mm. I think it was amplified by the fact that their real lives kind of mirrored the themes in their movie. Oh, interesting. Love triangles, ambition, navigating friendships. It was all happening on and off screen. Right, blurring the lines between fiction and reality. It makes you wonder how much of that real life chemistry uh -huh. made it into those iconic St. Elmo's Fire performances. Right, was it art imitating life or the other way around? Who knows? Maybe that's part of the magic. I think so. It's all about that dance between reality and fiction. Yeah. Personal experience and creative expression. It's fascinating. It really is. And with the Brat Pack, that line was definitely blurred. Yeah. Which probably just added to their mystique. For sure. So we've talked a lot about the Brat Pack, their mm -hmm. impact, yeah. and all the buzz around this potential St. Elmo's Fire sequel. Let's focus on that sequel for a bit. Why? Rob Lowe mentioned it, exploring second chances mm -hmm. and finding happiness later in life. Do you think those themes will resonate with people today? I do. We do. I mean, those are universal experiences. Absolutely. Searching for happiness. Second chances. It's never too late to chase your dreams. Everyone can relate to that, no matter their age. Right. Especially now. Oh, yeah. Think about it. We're constantly bombarded with these messages about success. Mm -hmm. Like... You need to achieve everything by a certain age. Yeah. And if you haven't, then what? Exactly. It's easy to feel like you've missed your chance. Like it's too late for happiness. But that's just not true. And a film like this could be a good reminder of that. It could. And what better way to explore those themes? Than with characters we already know and love. Right. Who've grown and changed over the years. Faced real challenges. It's almost like a second coming of age story. Yeah, but instead mm -hmm. of figuring out who you are in your 20s. Right. It's about rediscovering yourself in your 50s or 60s. Love it. Imagine seeing these characters decades later. Confronting their regrets. Celebrating their wins. And ultimately finding a new sense of purpose. A story like that could really resonate with people. Offer hope and inspiration. To anyone who feels like they've missed out. Or needs a fresh start. It's especially relevant now. Well, think about all the conversations around aging these days. Mm -hmm. We're moving away from this idea that getting older means decline. Yeah, like you become irrelevant. Exactly. We're starting to see our later years as a time for growth. New experiences. Maybe even a resurgence of passion and creativity. I love that. A St. Elmo's Fire sequel that reflects that shift Yeah. could be really powerful. Absolutely. And it's the perfect opportunity to showcase these 
actors, mm -hmm. they can bring so much depth and nuance to these characters now. More than they could have when they were younger. It's not just nostalgia. It has the potential to be a truly insightful film. About the human experience. Except. It's amazing how this conversation has gone from, like, yeah. Brat Pack gossip to these deeper questions. About aging, happiness. And like we peeled back the layers of Hollywood history. We found all these connecting threads. That create this like rich tapestry. That's what I love about taking a deep dive. Me too. You start with one thing and end up uncovering these unexpected connections. To these bigger ideas. It reminds you that knowledge is interconnected. And that even something seemingly trivial. Can lead to profound insights. I like that. Well, on that note, yeah. let's move on to the final part of our deep dive. Okay. We'll get into specific storylines we'd love to see. The challenges of recapturing that St. Elmo's fire magic. And the potential impact of this sequel on how we think about aging and happiness. Sounds good. All right. So we've covered the Brat Pack phenomenon. And the enduring themes of St. Elmo's fire. And we've talked about the potential for a sequel that speaks to a whole new generation. We have. Now let's have a little fun with this. Okay. Okay. If you were writing this sequel, what kind of storylines would you want to see? Like what kind of second acts would be most satisfying for these characters after all this time? Oh, that's a great question. Right. Well, we know the original film captured that post-college angst, mm -hmm. the uncertainty of becoming an adult. Yeah. Decades later, those anxieties could have morphed into something totally new. Right. Like maybe some characters achieved all their dreams. Yeah. While others are at a crossroads. Totally. Questioning their choices. Exactly. Imagine the possibilities. Right. Like, what if Billy, the party animal, mm -hmm. is now dealing with a midlife crisis? Oh, that's good. Right. Grappling with the consequences of his past. Oh, exactly. Or maybe Wendy, who seemed so sure of herself, yep. is now questioning everything. Her career, her relationships. Totally. That's so interesting. And then there's their friendships. Oh, what? Have they stayed close all these years? Or have they drifted apart? It would be amazing to see how they navigate those relationships. I know rediscovering those old bonds yes i can just picture it like a reunion scene oh tell me they all come together for a wedding or something okay and all those old tensions and affections resurface i love it laughter reminiscing but also some unfinished business oh, anyway. and you know what else they could do what weave in elements from the actors real lives oh that's smart like rob lowe's journey to sobriety mm -hmm. what if they gave billy a similar arc that would be powerful. Right. Showing that growth is always possible. Especially for anyone going through something similar. Exactly. It would be a message of hope. Yeah. And redemption. And it speaks to this bigger idea. About what? That this sequel could be more than just entertainment. Right. It could be a really insightful portrayal of aging. And the search for fulfillment. Exactly. That's what makes this project so exciting. Well, no, right. It could be both nostalgic and relevant. Totally tapping into our love for these characters, yeah, but also giving us a fresh perspective. On the challenges and triumphs of midlife. I love that. And who knows, maybe it'll even inspire people yeah. to reevaluate their own lives. To think about what really matters. What makes them happy. It could spark conversations about second chances. About embracing change, finding happiness on your own terms. No matter how old you are. I like that. It's amazing how far we've come in this deep dive. I know, right? From behind the scenes gossip. To these big questions about the power of storytelling. It's really cool how it all connects. Well, as we wrap up this deep dive into St. Elmo's Fire, yeah. I want to know what you're taking away from this conversation. Mm -hmm. Did it spark any new thoughts? About the Brat Pack, the movie yeah. itself. Or even about your own life. Share your thoughts with us online. We want to keep this conversation going. Because it doesn't end here. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning. And keep those deep dives coming. And remember, it's never too late to find your own St. Elmo's Fire.